I'm gonna go inside in just a moment. Do you have any tips? Is there anything I need to watch out for? I don't want to make them angry. There's so many in here. I don't want to stress them. Oh my God! Ah! Last time on our best ever Central Vietnam bike tour, Andrew and I had a little race. I did pretty well, second place, but he got first. No, no. Meaning he got to choose our tasks. It's pretty chill, I kind of like it out here. He got to pick veggies while I was stuck removing cow intestines by hand. I just grab it? Yeah. Today, we're heading from Bun Matut all the way back to the vibrant tourist city of Nha Chang. Moving away from the mountains and to the coastline means different geography, which means different food. It's a big coastal city. For sure, it's gonna be something from the ocean. Andrew and I are on a mission, exploring the unknown. Oh, jeez. Ready to open our wallets. I hope it tastes pretty good. <laughs> and pay any price. This is what I've been waiting for. For one of the country's most treasured food experiences. But before we bite off more than we can chew, we better get some breakfast. Good morning, Andrew. Good morning, Mr. Sunny Todd. Today's breakfast is a daring way to start your day. The owner, Mr. Todd, proudly brought this recipe from the north to the central region, where locals can't seem to get enough of the star ingredient, eel. You know, nobody knows how eels reproduce. Good, leave them alone. <laughs> the eel meat is boiled with turmeric water and a secret family seasoning that can't be revealed. Add some fried onions, and while it's cooking, stir fry glass noodles with bean sprouts, soy sauce, secret sauce, and some nuts so secret MSG. Don't forget to top it with a mound of eels and breakfast is served. I'm seeing some eel and then underneath that glass noodles. It seems like all the ingredients are kind of just right there in the name. Let's give it a try. It actually looks pretty good. Mm. Oh, it's f***ing damn. Wow, it's so good. A little peppery, just like a deep, inspiring savoriness. Eating the eel alone, it's just super tender. I thought it would be bony. So I want to take a bite of just the glass noodle. Right. Why don't you give that to you? That's my job. All right, Andrew, today's card says, go to Nha Chang. Oh, it's pretty short. So right now, we're in Bun Matut. Nha Chang's about 200 kilometers from here. What do you know about this city? Coastal tourist town, much like Da Nang, where we started this trip. Beautiful seascapes, beach clubs, good food. I'm trying to figure out what she has in store for us. Nha Chang, it's on the coast. For sure, it's gonna be something from the ocean. I'm excited, I can do the ocean. Nha Trang City, a beach lover's paradise in Vietnam. Clean sand, clear ocean, beautiful scenery with tons of picturesque islands. It's a perfect getaway destination for travelers looking to get lost. Sadly, I'm not here for any of that. Instead, Andrew and I are on a mission to discover, uh, to discover, well actually, I don't know what the mission is. We were informed to go to Nha Trang, specifically here in front of these people. You know what's... Do you know what's going on? Oh, uh, thank you. Come on, G. Now we got a card from someone that's not our producer. What's going on? All right, let's read to find out. All it right. says, no, you're not eating seafood today. You've come to Nha Chang to partake in an ancient food tradition that's mm. really taken flight. Bird nests. That's not food. You're yeah, part. what is that? Across from you, the founder of one of Nha Chang's premier nest production facilities, Miss Nyo. She and this production facility have been selling this delicacy for four years. First of all, thank you so much for meeting us. It's a pleasure to be here. Joining us today, Mr. Chow, an experienced local tour guy and founder of the tour company Eat Like a Local. You have five minutes to learn everything you need to know about this rare Vietnamese delicacy. Go. Oh. Uh, now, I've heard that eating bird nests is a thing. I don't understand how it works. Bird's nests are made of sticks and grass. How do you eat a bird's nest? This is like one kind of bird that she's gonna produce by the saliva. Turns out, folks aren't eating bird's nests made of sticks and grass, but bird saliva, much better. And according to Miss Nyo, people don't pay big bucks for its flavor, but for its perceived health benefits. I have foggy head because of the Jack Daniels going through my veins. We both have hair. <laughs> Right. Can it help with any of those things? Some part of the problem may be solved, but not really everything. Well, I guess the bird nest won't cure all that ails me after all. It's believed the bird saliva only acts as a supplemental trove of nutrients and vitamins, especially good for the elderly and kids. 
Here on this property, you have a whole processing facility for the bird's nest. Can we take a look at how you're processing this food? Yes. This bird nest factory, known as Yen Sao Nitrang, started with only 10 team members. Now, after just four years, they've expanded to pretty much every province in Vietnam. So how'd they do it? Right now, we're in one of your production rooms. Can you tell us what happens here? Bạn đang gấp lông, nhặt lông. So this is where they pick up the feather because after you collect the bird nest from the house, they still have the feather of the bird in it. Preparing a bird's nest to sell isn't as easy as plucking it off a cliff and boiling it in some water. First, a huge amount of raw nests will soak together in water. As the nests loosen and break apart, large buckets of nest material are brought to specialists for detailed cleaning. Technicians use bright lights and tweezers to carefully pull off micro hairs, dust, anything dirty or impure. The twice reviewed nest fragments are brought to a shaping specialist. Here, those separated nest fragments are brought back together and reconstructed into the perfect nest. It looks like a big bowl of vermicelli. This is like a hundred US dollar vermicelli. <laughs> <laughs> right. How old are you when you first tried bird nest? When she was young, 10 years old, she eat the bird's nest naturally from the cliff outside of the ocean. And it's really rare. But nowadays, because everyone knows of the bird nest gonna help you to get stronger, so people gonna invest a bird house and then they collect it in from the house. This small taste of the bird nest industry has whet my appetite for more. So the original bird nest came from the mountain. Well, Andrew, we should go there right now. To the mountains? Yes. Andrew and I are setting off to sea to get some answers, heading to the place these nests begin. Islands like these are where it all started. These bits of land, far from the shore, far from humanity, are the perfect place to build a nest. outside of arm's reach on a damp, cool, dark mountain's edge. The place many swiftlets call home. In the past, one of the reasons these bird nests are so expensive is because it's so hard to get. People would have to climb up this rock face in a cave where it's slippery, where it's dangerous, where if you fall, you're gonna be smoked and dead. With demand steadily increasing, locals have discovered a streamlined, super efficient method of obtaining these nests. But there is still an industry, a desire and a market for bird nests that come from the mountain. Because some people believe these are the real deal. I mean, I'm starting to believe it. Out here in this hot, sweaty environment, this has got to be more effective. It's got like the magic of the mountain, of the ocean. It's gonna fix your male pattern baldness, my eating problem. Even though most nests are now derived through mass production, the debate rages on about whether the birdhouse nest or the more truly wild mountainside nest is superior. Maybe Miss Nyo can clear this up. Let's end this flashback. What are we, are we in a flashback? We must be. And we're back. And now I've also seen these before, these sort of wild bird's nest houses. But is there a difference in product? I mean, it seems much more exciting to me to get it from a cliff than just from a house. So in the local people mind, they think that they is the different. But with the people in this business, she's gonna understand the bird is the same bird. They go to the mountain, they also eat something like a worm. And right here, they also eat the naturally food. You cannot feed them. You just build for them a place to stay there. Andrew, yeah. if bird nests come from the mountains originally, right. we should go to the mountains. Again? What are you guys doing here? We already did the scene. Go back, go back, go back. After the bird nest is cleaned and reshaped, it's brought to a drying room for two days. Finally, it hits the sterilizer for one hour and it's ready for packaging. Each container holds only 100 grams of bird nest, the same weight as about five strawberries, with a price tag of around 6.5 million Vietnamese dong. If you're looking at it per kilogram, the price is $2,780. That's one of the most expensive foods in the world by weight. Wow. From here, her plan is to expand into different categories. Bird nest juice, bird nest coffee, even an instant bird nest, like instant noodles. Ma'am, thank you so much for your time. The only thing that remains now is to actually eat it. Now, with a head full of fairly useless bird nest knowledge, Andrew and I are finally getting a taste for real. I'm talking VIP dining just outside these industrial-sized birdhouse buildings, home to thousands of birds. Boom! We're doing it. Okay, my man, first of all, 
I heard you are the bird person. Meet Mr. Gui, a bird nest expert and veteran in charge of this compound, giving us a close-up look at how they operate. Behind both of us are the biggest birdhouses I've ever seen. When I hear the word birdhouse, my mind immediately flashes back to the small, cute, slightly f***ed up looking monstrosity I made back in 8th grade shop class. But this place is on another level. This luxury avian condo can house up to 3,000 birds. So what we're hearing, these are pre-recorded bird sounds. The question is, once you build the house, it's the perfect living conditions for birds, how do you actually get the birds to move in? Everything he said he done in this house is just 70%. And the 30% he's waiting for it is luck. So yes, even if you build the swankiest bird penthouse on the block, that doesn't mean anyone's gonna move in. So how many times a year are they building a nest? So four times a year, their home disappears, mm -hmm. and they're like, ah, let's just make another one. That's the way we say it's not very smart bird, you know? <laughs> I'm gonna go inside in just a moment. Do you have any tips? Nothing else. Mr. Yui gonna guide you inside the bird tabs, all right? While Andrew watches our chef cook, I'm sneaking away to get my own close-up VIP tour of the birdhouse. Sorry, Andrew. Today, I'm doing the cool job. Look, while Sonny is in there exploring the birdhouse, I'm gonna do something that's actually useful, like help prepare the food. Okay. Right away, you can feel the temperature is about 10 degrees cooler than outside, and it's very damp. Meet Mr. Chung, a five-star chef with 19 years of culinary experience. Today, the chef is cooking up a three-course meal, grilled oyster with bird nest, bird nest yogurt, and plain, bold bird nest with rock sugar. Great, so how do we get started? Uh, on any stuff. Oh, jeez, it's a little creepy in here. In the dark, they look like bats flying around. Cool. We're gonna open the oysters with scissors. And they open oysters very differently here. How do you, no? Yeah. Cut a bit off? No, this is not gonna work. Whoa! No, I think it's gonna work. Oh my god! Ah! Oh man, I, I think I got half the freaking oyster shell in there. Oh, well, there we go. Two more. Okay, so we line this up, punch it in, and crank the lid open. So far, this seems pretty normal. Grilled oysters. These things are all over the place. And then on the ground is covered with nutritious bird poop. Something's off here. This is supposed to be the cool job, but it mostly includes walking through mounds of poo, while even more poo falls from the ceiling. It's a sharknado of poo in here. Uh. <sighs> At least I'm learning something. Right, so we've got four oysters grilling. What's next? Mm. Chef Chung elevates the fish sauce that'll soon pair with oysters. Mashed chilies, garlic, and sugar are all mixed with fish sauce, then cooked in oil. There's so many speakers in here. They're off for the moment while we're shooting, but usually these are turned on and it's like a little bird nightclub, basically. Building a new nest doesn't take long, but the process is painful. The saliva itself is perfect for sticking to walls, but it doesn't come quick. Each night, the bird builds up about one millimeter of nest, just a fraction of an inch. After seven to 10 days, the nest is finally complete. Here we have some of the bird's nests. I thought it would look like noodles, but uh, no, it's just kind of gelatinous, gooey paste, really. I hope it tastes pretty good. <laughs> the bird nest is added to the oyster, along with shredded coconut, mango strings, and the fish sauce. Why is it that we are making it in this extravagant way? Does the bird's nest add any flavor to this dish? Mr. Chung, Thank you so much for your time. I can't wait to try it out. Here we are. There are very loud bird sound effects playing over speakers. Yeah, they're not even real birds. Our very first taste of bird nest, mixing it with oysters. Yeah, these are the ones I help make. But do you know how to cook? Well, not really. Remember the fish that you got us? <laughs> There's not a huge presence of nest. I it's hard to tell. I think you gotta drink the liquid. It's delicious, but if you told me there's bird nest in there, I would not believe you. Also, with all these crazy flavors, I'm not that surprised we couldn't taste it. Right, it's powerful. There's two more dishes. I'm hoping there's something that's just more purely bird's nest. Yeah, me too. Course two. The bird nest is placed in a small pot along with pandan water, then gently steamed. The chef slices and dices pineapple, rambutan, jackfruit, mango, and papaya. 
they hit the grill to bring out some more flavor. Finally, everything gets tossed together along with coconut, palm seeds, jellies, and the bird nest, along with some yogurt. And course two, on three, one, two, three. Huh? It's basically a yogurt and fruit. I guess if you want to get your bird's nest in in the morning, this could be a good breakfast. Yeah, it's fortified with bird's nest and nutrients and other nutrients. Hmm. It's fine, but like, where's the nest? I got nothing, bro. Let me ask the camera guy. Hey, did you see them actually put bird nest into the dish? We have video proof. I think it's just more of a medicine, man. Yeah, I don't know. I can't tell it out. Well, listen, at least we know we're getting that bird nest nutrition. The pure stuff, right? So far, our experience has been pleasant, but a bit underwhelming. I knew the nests weren't renowned for their taste, but I thought they'd have some flavor. Last dish, last chance. This time, it'll be prepared in the most traditional way. Simply steamed in pandan water with a pinch of rock sugar. Now, there's no sharp, bold flavors standing between our taste buds and the nest. Are you ready? I am ready. Oh, should I put that back in? Oh. Like when you have the dry bird nest, it kind of looks like a package of ramen noodles. Right. But when you cook it down, it really it just becomes kind of a goobery I know. sludge. There's nothing else in it, right? It's just saliva. And I guess it's just turning back into saliva. Oh, uh, you keep reminding me of that. First, I'm gonna give it a smell. Very neutral, not a lot there. It didn't, that's in? This is one of the most expensive foods in the world, and it tastes like nothing. It's just the medicinal purposes. It has protein, it has some nutrients, but the same that you would find in just eating some chicken meat. Look, I'm not a doctor, but I feel like if this really was groundbreaking medicine, I'd probably be getting it from the pharmacy. But I think that's a big difference between East and West. The line between food and medicine isn't right. always clear. And a lot of these foods come from China or have a background in traditional Chinese medicine. Mm. It's not purely like, this is medicine, this is nutrition. So is it really good for you? I can't say for sure. If people take it and it makes and feel better in some way, I've got no issue with that. Neither do I. So that's it, bird's nest soup, done. First time I've ever tried it, yep. Good? Good. Local cuisine always tells a story. What you find on a plate can reveal a lot about geography, climate, and even cultural values. The flavor is in the storytelling behind the food. I like it. Here, these nests have virtually no nutrition, but they're really hard to get your hands on. So what's rare, is valued. The most as important customer for her market now is Vietnamese, and then she also exports to China, Korea, Japan, because the Asian people is the one who understand the most right. about the bird nest, and then they understand the way that make the health really uh, better. Whether this food is just a few glops of pasty bird spit, or whether it is the healing superfood the legends claim, only the consumer can decide for themselves. Next time, in our grand finale. Where you're going today, your bikes will be of no use. Andrew and I run out of road, so we're heading to the ocean, diving deep for local delicacies and bringing this friendly adventure. I have you on my show and you ruined my show! To an end. From researching and shooting to editing and mastering, our 10-person best ever food review show team works hard to roll out the highest quality travel food entertainment twice a week. If you like what we do here, please consider supporting our Patreon. Patreon allows fans of the show to contribute a monthly sum and receive a load of extras like early video releases, private Q&As, and beyond. To learn more about our Patreon, check out the link in the description box down below. And if you can't give or don't even feel like it, that's okay too. <laughs> We're just happy you're here. Boom, handshake. Follow Andrew if there's a thing here. Follow that. Bird nest, we got to the bottom of that. In this series, there's one more video. What is it? We don't know, we didn't do that stuff yet. Guys, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. A, a peace. peace. Oh, all right, I wanna eat a penguin nest next time. Have penguin? you ever had a penguin nest?